in the crossover segment there are tons of offerings out there now what you're seeing across the board is a lot of chiseling and sculpting and a lot of weird designs now behind me they kept it somewhat basic hey welcome to this edition of road warrior i'm your host grant robertson now this offering is the 2016 jeep renegade and they pretty much went with the good old straight edge if you're not familiar with the Renegade, it really starts here on the outside. Now, you may be familiar with the Kia Soul and those square-like designs. Well, that's kind of what they mimic here. Now, what you see is pretty much tight lines all the way across, a little bit of chiseling, it nice and angles up, and just a little bit of flare here at the back end. What you're also going to see on this particular model is the bright color. Now, it took a lot of people by notice and really was eye-catching. Now, overall, the height, somewhat squatty, and the overall numbers, pretty straightforward. After all, this is kind of in that crossover size segment. Now, what I do like is it still has that Jeep ruggedness. We'll look at the front in a second, but what you notice down the side really is the lower rubber fascia. Now, of course, that's going to keep the scrapes and dings to a minimum. Now, this was not the four-wheel drive version, so it didn't get a lot of off-road practice on this vehicle, but it's still there. And where you see it, really up at the front wheels, down the side, and sweeps all the way around the vehicle. Looking a little bit at the black accents, where you're going to find that is on the side mirrors, of course, that lower fascia, and as you pan around, really around the windows. Now, that's going to minimize any of the chrome effect you're going to have a lot of vehicles. Anytime you go small, stay away from chrome and really go with the nice accents you see here. One thing you'll notice on this particular model is the full glass all the way around that's not tinted. Now, what that does is create like a kind of a heat box, almost like a greenhouse effect. Obviously, I'd prefer a tinted version all the way around because after all, it truly is tons of glass and even more when you sweep around to the back. This vehicle maybe reminds you of a construction barrel, but one thing you can look at up front is really gonna scare people, is this grill warfare. Now this vehicle, again, somewhat compact, but what you see oversized really starts with the cylinder old school headlights. Now this is stereotypical Jeep styling, really brought from the Wranglers and their long lineup and history. Now what you'll see across the middle, this stereotypical Jeep grill. Now this whole front end, if you don't wanna memorize it, you're gonna find it all the way inside this vehicle. This right here is a stylized emblem that we'll point out once we climb inside. Now, otherwise, you're going to have body color and, again, a lot of that black rubber fascia. Really sweeping down low because, after all, when you do get this in a four-wheel drive model, you're going to want kind of that brush guard-like effect. Really minimizing all the scrapes and dings, putting a lot of black fascia up here really helps protect this vehicle. Looking at the numbers, what you're going to find here on the Renegade is, well, it's fairly small and, well, that's obvious. Now, by the numbers, you look at 166 inches overall, wheelbase around about 101. And obviously, they put the wheels about as far in the corners as they possibly can. Now, those numbers stack up, obviously, closer to the compact market versus anywhere close to the midsize. And when you look at this vehicle, to be expected. Now, one other number you want to talk about really is ground clearance. Now, this is the standard 4x2. That means ground clearance around about 6.7 inches. Now, if you upgrade this all the way to the 4x4 Trailhawk Edition, well, heck, you're going to get close to around about 9 inches of clearance. Definitely delivering some off-road prowess. One other number to talk about really is the width and height. Now, what you have here is just over five feet tall and just over six feet wide, giving you decent numbers that translate somewhat on the inside. Now, one other number really is the tires. Now, what you see on this model is 16 inch wheels, slightly small, but when you hit the off road with the four wheel drive versions, you can upgrade all the way to an 18 inch version. Now, one of the things to talk about as you swing around really is the fill up area. Seems trivial, but what I like here is we do go with a capless system. Pretty much meaning you pop this open, fill it up, and keep moving. Swing around to the business end of the Renegade. First thing you'll notice really is the Sport emblem. And where's the Sport? Right here on the rear spoiler. Give it just a little bit extra pizzazz to match the overall color. Now, one thing about this business end really comes down to the cargo. With the squared off lines, really delivering about as much space on the inside as you can imagine. Now, what I like is as you sweep down, you're going to see that huge rubber fascia brought around to the back. Again, helping with the off-road prowess of this vehicle. Now, when you want to gain access to this vehicle, one thing to note, I thought it'd be logically about right here, an easier place to reach. Actually, it's way down here, almost in this little crevice. It takes just a second to really find the spot. Once you press that, it's electronic release. It's going to open right up. Now, when that opens up, what you're going to find is decent cargo, around about 18 cubic feet. Now, once the rear seats are laid down, it's going to triple to around about 50 cubic feet, giving you a de decent space on the inside, basically about the size of a mid-size sedan. 
looking at the cargo area, what you're gonna notice really is the carpeted. Now that's gonna make it a little bit slippery back here for items that are gonna kinda of sling around. But what I really like is the four anchor points. Now that's gonna help you harness things really when you're going off-road, bouncing everything around. Now what you're also gonna notice is the nice area under the cargo floor. Now this is really a two-tier system, having a huge storage underneath. One thing you're not gonna find on this particular model, is a spare at all now that's because maybe this is a four by two they don't expect you maybe to puncture a tire but as you upgrade look here to make sure that option is available now one other thing to talk about really is safety now when you get this hatch nice and closed and buttoned up and you're backing this vehicle up there's one thing that was the achilles heel in this vehicle there is no backup camera this provided somewhat of a good view but not enough in my opinion well one other thing that didn't help this particular model did not have any backup sensors with all this rubber cladding you're not going to ding anything too bad but sensors would truly help now when it comes to the power plant what you expect of course is four cylinder now they have two options they have the 1.4 liter turbocharged engine like we had here or the bigger 2.4 liter tiger shark now both of those are multi-air engines now what we had here was around about 160 horses and 184 foot pounds of torque if you go with a slightly bigger engine well that's going to be 180 horses and 175 foot pounds of torque now what this engine was coupled with was a six-speed manual transmission not truly my preference because heck it meant there was a lot of work behind the wheel what i would have preferred was the nine-speed automatic transmission that would have made for less of a clutch stance and a lot smoother ride going down the road when you climb inside the jeep renegade this is where it's going to feel well a lot bigger than it looks now where you're going to see that really is in the overall headroom heck this vehicle has a cathedral like feel when you look up above where that starts really is with the seating position not only does it go to and fro it also goes up and down with a nice lever on the side that's truly going to accommodate various heights because even at six feet i can bring it down or up when i got in here this truly was immense up above me with any vehicle that's small, another number you want to look at really is the leg room. Up front, around about 41 inches. In the back, drops to about 35. The back seat being about at minimum of what you want to see. Now, what I do like is the overall position. And this vehicle has a lot of reclinability when it comes to its seating in the second and the front row, allowing you to really find its comfort. Even better, the tilt and telescoping steering wheel really can help you find your overall length when it comes to your stretch. What you're always going to find front and center really is the entertainment. Now, what you're going to find here is somewhat straightforward. One thing that was missing right off the bat was the satellite radio option, something I definitely would upgrade to. Now, it was pretty much straightforward. No touch screen, but pretty much using the old standard buttons. Now, what you're also going to find around the dash is a lot of emblems. First thing here is since 1941. You also find a lot of stylized Jeep logos throughout the entire inside. They didn't overthink the climate controls, pretty much went with three standard size knobs, really with all the modes in between. Really the nice sizing is perfect, and I like the fact that we brought a little bit of chrome on the inside here. Now in this particular model, there was no Bluetooth connectivity, so pretty much to hook up your music, you're going to use one of these two ports. We use the aux jack, but you can use the USB connection. Now I do like the fact that there is a nice power supply here, and a nice storage tray down below to keep your phone. Look at that, the gauge is going to be straight analog, tack, and speedometer, but it does have a nice digital display for the speedometer in the middle. Now the controls on the steering wheel were pretty much straightforward for the cruise control on the right and the menu select there for the digital readout between the gauges. Now what you'll notice is some blank spots for added accessories that this particular model didn't come with. One thing that can be cumbersome when driving a manual transmission really is setting the parking brake, but what I like here is the good old electronic pretty much sets it for you. Looking at the back seat, where this is where you're gonna find decent numbers. Now, what I like is the fact that it has pretty much upright seating and decent bench here across the middle. Really enough room for three across. Now, it doesn't have a little center console for any elbow support, and really cup holders are pushed to the doors. But overall, good comfort for five people all the way around. This dish row were in a test drive behind the wheel of the 2016 Jeep Renegade. Now, some highlights on this vehicle. Well, the design is pretty much straightforward, squared off, and the color, not so much nice and bright kind of remind us of a construction barrel and especially with all that rubber cladding really going to minimize the dinks now the one thing we wish we had was the 4x4 version this one not going off road as much lastly you do have the old school headlights up front decent cargo in the back and straightforward seating on the inside now as always like thank you for watching this edition road warrior keep both hands on the wheel and eyes straight ahead